Hi everyone, welcome back to my channel. I'm Andrea Ali. I'm a professional makeup artist based in Paris. And in today's video, I'm going to do a clean makeup look. I've started this series on Instagram stories and I thought maybe I should do this on YouTube. So basically this idea started from multiple aspects of my job and the things that I do. So if you've been following my YouTube channel, my Instagram for a while, you know that part of my job back in the days was to go into women's makeup kits or like makeup collection. I very often would go to their houses and I would just teach them how to use what they have. I would throw away or like not throw away, but like kind of separate products that they were a no-no for that person, like not the right colors, not the right textures. And then I would categorize them into two sections. I would put like makeup that you use every day and makeup for special occasions. And then I would separate because I know a lot of you guys have makeup and brushes in one place. And then I would separate them and, and just find a system that it's easier for you to do the makeup. I would also see that person doing their own makeup live and I would try to adjust things uh, it was a long process, but a very satisfying one. This is how I got to learn so much about how women are doing their makeup. That's why I feel like I know when I talk to you guys here, I feel like I already know you. <laughs> Obviously, I don't. Um, but just based on my experience working with so many women. And then if you follow me on Instagram, you know that I love to do the makeup depending on what I'm wearing. So I think that fashion is and beauty, they're very, very related. And I, I, now I'm not trying to say that I'm a fashion connoisseur by no means, but I do know colors and textures. So there is a connection between, you know, what you're wearing, the colors that you're wearing and the makeup that you're wearing. So I decided to now categorize makeup into three sections, the clean, makeup which is the makeup that you are applying for every day not for a special occasion just for everyday realistic <laughs> life not for when you're doing a picture with your bestie not for you know social media ready it's just something that you wear at work running errands for an interview. I would just call it clean makeup because this is what it is it's a clean makeup think about it as a uniform the second type of makeup, the second category would be the sophisticated, the sophisticated modern makeup. And that is everything that has a little bit heavier textures. And when I say heavier, it doesn't mean like really heavy, just a bit more coverage, more pigment. The type of makeup that has shimmers and glitters and, you know, eyeliner and maybe false lashes and more obvious makeup on the face is what I'm trying to say. Obviously the name says it all. That's for a special occasion. It's maybe you have a date night, maybe you're going for a concert, just anything that is special where you want to feel amazing. And then the third category is the fun makeup. And that I got inspired obviously by a lot of you who I know that you buy products because they're pretty, but then you never use such as you, you bought that mono eyeshadow, glittery violet eyeshadow or like emerald green eyeshadow because it was so beautiful and you thought one day you're gonna use it but then you never really do. Or, or you bought this beautiful pencil because you saw it at, I don't know, what influencer and you thought, oh my God, that's gonna look amazing on me but then you never use it. So I'm going to give you the tools on how to achieve that as well. I know that it's probably not everyone's cup of tea, but I know that you have those products in your collection, in your makeup collection, because if you are following this channel, you are a makeup lover and you probably have more products that you need. So the purpose of these series is not to make you buy anything new, but to just use what you already have. With that being said, today I'm starting this series with the clean makeup look, and I'm thinking that maybe once a week I could do a variation 
of these looks and also tell you guys where you could wear it, how you could wear it, what textures would go with it, and so on and so forth. So I'm starting the series with clean makeup and it's obviously the makeup that I'm wearing right now, which is a little bit more than just a no makeup makeup look, but not a photo ready makeup. All right, let's get into today's makeup look. I'm going to start with a bronzing base. Now this product is not your typical bronzing base. Think about it as a self tanner for your face, but you can wash it off in the evening. It doesn't have the, the typical ingredients that self tanners do. It just gives you temporary color and it's not gonna rub, let's just say you you have collars, a white shirt, it's not gonna rub off your clothes, which I think is great. So it's from Super Goop, it's called Summer Tone Bronzing Gel and it's literally changing your skin into your summer skin. It looks like super black. Actually, I need a little bit more than that. And the reason why I'm doing this is because every time I'm wearing something dark, it could be gray or black, I just feel very washed off. Like, I feel very pale, that's the reality. And I think that this product is giving me that little bit of pick-me-up uh, skin. And you'll see it's not changing my skin into like this crazy color. Just a little bit of warmth. So I apply this everywhere, including the eyelids. And you gotta do this super, super fast. Because, I don't know if you can see, it leaves a little bit of a stain. So you want to work this super fast on your skin. Is this the best step for me to do after I just had extractions? You guys, I gotta tell you this. I wanted to make an appointment for this doctor because I am thinking about doing something for my under eyes. Now, I don't know if you know this, in 2017 or 2018, I don't know exactly, I've documented <laughs> this whole procedure that I did in LA at Dr. Deer uh, where I did under eye filler. Uh, for my dark circles and at the time it was very popular now fillers is a big no-no Since then I did not touch my face because honestly I liked the way it looked right after but as the years passed by I think that It just moved in a weird way. I wouldn't do it again. I, I wouldn't recommend it uh, Although the doctor was such an amazing guy uh, and I loved him. It's just not a procedure that I would ever recommend. And anyway, I I wanted to look for something, I don't know, something else that could make me, you know, have less of a hollow here. Whatever it is, I don't know, fat transfer, whatever. I found this guy on Instagram and he gave me an, an appointment in 2026. Who knows if I'm still going to be alive in 2026? Like what is... Anyway, I took the appointment and then the people from his office, from this doctor's office, I'm not going to say the name, I don't want you to think that I'm uh, trying to be, uh, encourage you to do anything. I'm just being honest. So the, the people from the office, they were like, okay, en attendant, meaning like, meanwhile, <laughs> while you're waiting for your appointment, we're going to do all these like skin procedures. And I'm like, okay, you should know that needles, it's a no-no. I can't stand the pain. One of the reasons why I liked Dr. Deer in Los Angeles because he did a true anesthesia before he did the procedure. Anyway, so I was like, I, no needles. Uh, and she's like, no, 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 no. You're, you're just going to do like all these treatments for the collagen. So today was the day when I had the appointment at this doctor's office. And there was this very kind lady that did whole routine for me, including extractions. I, know I talked so much just to tell you these things. Uh, so today I did extractions. It doesn't look like it. I, I, I basically did it like, what, five hours ago? And I told her like, listen, I have to film uh, something today. I have to do my makeup. Is this okay? And she was like, yeah, yeah as long as you wait about two hours, uh, then you can do it. And it doesn't look like I had extractions, but I like she used a needle and, you know, there were so many stuff that she extracted, this little guy. Anyway, I have it pretty much all over the face. So that's why I'm saying that maybe this is not a good time for me to apply this product. But I wanted to 
show it to you because I know a lot of people are like me where they feel very pale, especially when they're wearing black. I don't know, I just love to wear a full black outfit or like just a black shirt. It just washes me out, that's the whole thing, you know? I'm going to use this Merit, this is called The Minimalist, and it's a product that you could use under your eyes or all over the face. It's literally a product that is so easy to use. Listen, it's similar with Dior. I love the Dior, but I only have it in one color. So I, and I also like this one. I just know that this, for example, is not available in Europe. That's why I don't use it too much because every time I use it, you guys are, but this is not available in Europe. And I know it's, it's such a pity. I'm not sure if you can tell how it melts into the skin. I used to hate stick foundations, but, but I mean truly hate it because they were dry, they would like sit in the pores, they would look really unnatural. And then Westman Atelier came with a foundation stick and I kind of like, changed my perspective and then Merit and now Dior I mean I'm sure there are other brands but these are the three that I have in my head right now that I think they're really they have really changed the way stick foundations were point of this product is to just make the skin look very even so when it comes to the base for a clean makeup look, I was thinking, it's not a clean makeup look in my eyes. It's not like a no makeup makeup look, because that is super basic. It's super minimal, right? It's, the, it's basically invisible makeup. This is one step further, okay? If for a no makeup makeup look, I would use a more, more of a tinted moisturizer. For a clean makeup look, I would go just one step further, like I've mentioned, and I would go with either something like this, which is very, very light, or like a Shiseido foundation, like a Dior backstage foundation, that one is very light if you apply it in one layer. That's the type of foundation I would, that's the type of product I would use for this look. Next, listen, I could apply this under the eyes. Definitely this works, however, I love this product, especially for this look. I've been loving the new concealer from Victoria Beckham. And I have to say, this concealer is definitely not for everyone. Uh, and it's not for every occasion. But for a clean makeup look, for that I feel good, I look good, I am ready for the day kind of look, this is just perfect. I still don't have the perfect shade, I'm so sorry. I, I do need to go buy it, but uh, until then I'm still going to mix two shades. So I have light two and fair light one, and it just creates the perfect shade for me. So the first one, uh, the light two is a little bit too dark as you can see. And because this is a little bit darker, I can use this to spot conceal. This is so incredibly practical, this product. But for my under eyes, it's just too dark. So I mix it with the other color. And for this product in particular, I really like to use my fingers. Because I promise you guys, this is like moisturizer. It's like eye cream. It doesn't feel like uh, the typical concealer. Personally, personally, I have to say, uh, when I apply this concealer, I don't apply um, any moisturizer around my eye, like any eye cream, because this is so, so hydrating. Look at this. It's so beautiful and hydrating. Next product is going to be blush. Again, in my head, it's all about brightening my face, making myself look a little bit more fresh because the colors that we have around our face will influence the most. So the hair, the jewelry, scarf, whatever, 
is around the face is going to influence the most the way we look. So I can't stress enough about how much I prefer to create this fresh look when I wear dark colors. So I took the YSL Make Me Blush. I think this is in the shade 66. Let me check. Yes, this is in 66. And I kind of apply it the center of the cheeks. You need that, you need that pop. You need that pop of color. A little bit on the nose. I know it looks weird now. But we're gonna blend it like so and also what makes a difference is when you apply the blush a tiny little bit on the brow bone it just makes it look very realistic as if you're really blushing uh, and a little bit on the chin there are some people that apply it on the forehead honestly on me i don't like it on the forehead i'm never blushing on my forehead <laughs> So I don't see the point of applying, but you you do you. Already, I feel like the whole face got a bit brighter thanks to the blush. Now it's time for a little bit of shading. And I'm sure you have in your makeup collection or in your makeup drawer, I'm sure that you have something that is more on the lighter side. Could be... It doesn't have to be cream necessarily, but it has to be something that is not too dark on you. The point is not to strongly contour or like bronze. It's just to give you a little bit of shading to emphasize a bit more certain shadows. Product I'm, that I'm using is just perfect for this step. Uh, Makeup by Mario Bronzing and Shaping Serum in the shade Light. So. Here, the color is super important, as you can see, a really beautiful, lighter shade. Something that I would definitely use on someone with fair skin. And I've used it a little bit on the forehead. Now, a little bit lower than the blush. Yeah, just a tiny bit right here if you have this product this also works it's, this is the makeup by mario skin enhancer i'm gonna apply just a little bit more blush because it got kind of faded with the uh, bronzer because i feel like now it kind of faded once i've applied the bronzing serum and let's move on with eyebrows do you guys know this product this is a new volumizing tinted eyebrow gel from Anastasia Beverly Hills. And this is truly volumizing. It's not just a tinted eyebrow gel. Really makes your eyebrows look like 30% fuller, thicker. When I apply this product, I'm always amazed by the amount of eyebrows that I have, because a lot of them are blonde in my case either blonde or very very small so this is just perfect if you do have some eyebrow material if you just want to give them a little bit of tint like check this out it's the perfect everyday eyebrow product again it's not going to fit for everyone's needs but it's just what i currently am obsessed with Ah, I said I'm not going to use that expression. Okay, it's just something that I'm currently in love with. When it comes to the eyes, I'm going to keep it very, very simple. Realistic. I like this word because I think a lot of people are forgetting about the fact that not everything that we do has to be documented in an Instagram story or an TikTok. Most of us have nothing to do with social media. And I think a lot of the makeup looks that we see right now are social media ready. Don't get me wrong. I understand the power. I mean, if I don't, then who? The power of social media. However, 
However, not everyone is social media ready or has to be social media ready. So this is a product that I love to use because it's just so easy, light, it gives you a little bit of color. And it's mistake proof. And then just to brighten the eye, I will apply a little bit of this pencil. This one is from YSL. And I'm gonna apply a little bit, nothing crazy because this is super potent and it's very long lasting. Next is mascara. This is gonna be, I told you guys from the very beginning, this is an easy look. So mascara, this is the high impact mascara from Clinique. And literally one good layer of this gives you super long, thicker lashes. This is a product that you heard me talking about before you saw me applying before. It's a matte, lip balm i know the concept is kind of weird like why would a lip balm be matte but some people don't like that shiny feeling and this is supposed to give you uh in a very effortless way that effet la bouche mordue which is a very french way of applying lipstick basically it's uh it has a very blurry contour so let me apply this this it's in the shade bonbon coquillote and as you can see, I heavily apply it and it's never too much. It's just giving me that I've just been kissed type of lips. You could make this a lot more intense, but for me, this is, this is perfect in terms of intensity. Last step is a touch of powder. Now, I've mentioned many times, when you apply powder, think about the powder as the product that you apply it, not for now, but for later, especially if you have combination skin. If you have oily skin, you already know what's the deal with powder. I'm not gonna try to convince you, but if you have combination, even dry skin sometimes needs powder, especially under the eyes. Not every powder is the same, um, so I have to say, I'll just give you an example. The other day I decided to do my makeup without doing powder, without applying powder. I left the house, got to my client, finished my makeup around 1 p.m. And after I was done with the makeup, I was just like taking a look at myself in the mirror. And you guys, you could have fried an egg on my cheeks. I was so oily. Like, all this area was so oily and you know it's really it really bothers me when I start shining right here and also my my chin when I touched my skin it was just so disgustingly oily so that does not happen when I apply powder it just doesn't because my skin is not overly oily but if I don't powder it seems like it is so powder think about it like this powder for later not for now this time I'm using the Soft Focus Hydrate and Set Powder. This one is from Jouer. And it's a really nice product because I, in general, I think that... Oop, it's too much. In general, I think that compact powder is just easier for us to use and to just like take it with you if you have to do small touch-ups. I just make sure that my concealer didn't crease. And then apply a little bit of the powder on the forehead, under the eyes, just a touch. A little bit on the nose and on the chin. And this is my final look. This is the clean makeup look, just one interpretation. And please let me know in the comments if this is something that you're interested in. Obviously, I don't want to create videos that you guys do not really want to watch. Uh, so let me know if we should transform this into a series. Definitely on Instagram, you will find this on my stories and not only because a lot of 
people there. And I know it's not the same. People that follow me on Instagram, it's not the same. People that follow me on uh, YouTube, as weird as it sounds. I mean, some of you are, obviously, but a lot of you don't. So I know that on my Instagram, I've got such positive feedback towards this, but that is also because I share a lot of fashion there. So I don't know if this is something that you guys would be interested. Anyway, everything that I've mentioned is listed in the description down below. Thank you so much for watching. If you enjoyed this video, as usual, don't forget to give it a thumbs up. Make sure that you're subscribed. Click on the ring bell button so you'll be notified whenever I'm posting a new video. Follow me on Instagram as well. Thank you so much for watching and I'll see you guys in my next one. Bye.